This is Wilman Ziada, New York City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film. And today I am thrilled to be speaking with the renowned, dare I say renowned, singer-songwriter, Elizabeth Couto. But before we get to our interview, here's a sneak peek at Elizabeth's incredible talent. so happy to be here. I'm so happy we're finally meeting. Seriously, I know. <laughs> Even over Zoom, it's perfect. We'll take it. <laughs> and we, we had such a great offline chat about, you know, advocating for artists and creative artists. And I just love that we're both of the same mindset. And obviously, as we said offline of the CEOs of this amazing new app, I want to though dig into you. And I want to know, Elizabeth, where were you born? And when did you realize that first and foremost, you could sing, and by the way, really well. <laughs> um, well, I appreciate you for your kind words. Um, I am not born, I was randomly born in Sydney, Australia, totally separate from my current life. I'm based out of New York City and born and was raised in Boston, Massachusetts, um, which has been great. And I actually started my musical journey not as a singer at all. Um, I was in classical piano lessons totally by choice from a young age. I loved classical music. I loved that like soundscape world orchestra. I was, I've also um, still am a trombone player, which has been great. But so I actually started my kind of songwriting journey um, and performance journey as a classical pianist. And eventually I started writing classical music or in air quotes, that because obviously if I'm writing it in 2020, it's not classical, but um, kind of just my own um, not no lyrics, like solo piano music, which eventually translated into me wanting to be a, a cool 15 year old, like a Taylor Swift of sorts, and um, kind of just pairing um, lyrics, poems, like total diary entry type um, high school things with this piano music that I've created. And since then as just the ball was rolling and I haven't been able to stop since, so it's been great. I love it. And you know, what I also love, Elizabeth, is like, I, I've spoken with, as I told you, hundreds of artists all around the world. And for many singer songwriters, for so many of them, they, it began with the poetry and loving to create music and then naturally kind of fusing the two, Absolutely. just kind of stretching out the diary, stretching out the poetry, you know, giving it that, dare I say, more of uh, a song like Cadence. Was that kind of your journey, very natural fusion? I couldn't have said it better myself, yeah. And it's translated to like, just keeping my music so personal at the end of the day, um, like regardless of how much business or education has like come and came and gone, but like, it's always just been um, something at my core that like super true to myself, which has been great too. I love it. Well, you're an amazing uh, young artist, but already so accomplished. You're in, you know, one of the most happening places in Manhattan in the Lower East Side. I'm just curious what you were able to do these past 18 months to just keep your creative juices flowing. Yeah, I think, I mean, 
where to begin still, right? I think we're still getting out of it. We're learning so much about um, maybe where we were and could be as artists and performers and songwriters. Um, and it was really hard. I had released music the March of 2020, like my first um, solo release had all these gigs planned and it couldn't happen. So really I kind of turned to, I think people that I didn't even know were connections at the time, but looking for these like-minded, who else is has this loss right here? And um, ended up finding like DMing on Instagram. This song is awesome. We should write a song together. Kind of just forming this brand new network, which I, I guess already existed in a way, but there's a degree of being determined to pursue the arts that can never be lost, even in a pandemic. And so um, Zoom sessions, you know, it, you can make it work. And it's cool to, um, so yeah, Zoom sessions, kind of lyrics in a Google Doc and sending voice memos back and forth, you know. Um, and now it's cool. I'm meeting all these people in person again and we're able to play, but just at the end of the day, yeah, kind of similar to how I started, but remembering why, and you can always do it if you can, if you want. I love that, Elizabeth, and I think what, also what you're touching on is not only this newfound sense of gratitude that we all have as people, but especially artists, but also as artists, we've always made it work, and I hate to poo-poo the pandemic. Obviously, it's been a trauma and still is a trauma, um, but for so many artists I speak with, and I can actually attest to this, we've always been of the mindset making it work. We're in a business of constant no's in the pivot. And the, that's a no, that's cute, but we're gonna actually go over here and make it a yes. And so I just love your tenacity to continue in, to continue to follow your bliss and keep that pilot flame lit. It's really inspiring. Thank you. I also wanna touch on Elizabeth, something that we touched on a little bit offline your advocacy for artists. Talk to me a little bit about that fire that is within you. Yeah, um, I think that something that I personally, for me, really came out of the pandemic was the imbalance in the music industry, um, realizing how much um, emphasis and revenue was placed on performing concerts. And when that's taken away, as artists, we're earning 0 0.009 cents on every stream, you know, I think, um, why aren't we getting paid for our work at the end of the day? So, yeah. and that is the root of my opinion as a music creator and advocacy. And I hope that at all artists, whoever is watching, like you should, you should get paid. I mean, it's crazy that we're doing work, but, um, so I'm working for an advocacy group right now and kind of just going deep into the legalities of why, we aren't getting paid of these loopholes that exist that I think um, as a songwriter, I didn't even really know about until the past year. And so at this point, it's a lot of, like I said, advocacy, spreading this word. Um, I question everything. Why aren't you getting paid? We shouldn't settle for like nothing essentially. So oh, yeah, absolutely. that's a lot of and, and on top of that, I, and I love that there are people out there like you, Elizabeth, who are questioning. But we, we've been told and we're, we're programmed as artists, shh, you should be grateful for the exposure. Shh, you should just be grateful for the opportunity. What were people doing like during the pandemic to get through it? Watching streaming services. I mean, that's artists. Listening to new music, that's artists. And I love the fact that we are having this conversation. It's the conversation I've been having for seven months with now my dear friends, Alan and Lance, the co-founders of Phoenix. And now they've been able to build something whose foundation in North Star is advocacy for artists. Does it seem too good to be true? You bet your bottom dollar, unfortunately, because <laughs> we're it broken. <laughs> it's, we shouldn't feel like that. So listen, I could speak with you forever. And um, we, will, we will because we live in New York together. But I wanna just <laughs> let the audience know, for more on the amazing Elizabeth Kruchow, you can read more about her right below this video. I'm gonna get my voice checked, but I think it's just this dry air in here. Yeah, um, we both have the raspy voice going. <laughs> Elizabeth, you're incredible. I'm so excited you're joining this new um, social media platform, but also I'm so grateful that we are now connected. As am I. Thanks so much, Will. Thank you.